Well, I think we're live. So hi, everybody. Uh, thank you all for joining us for today's webinar, which is how to be an award-winning business. And um, I'm Eve Oxbury. I'm head of editorial for the beauty side of the Professional Beauty Group. Um, but today we're not only live on Professional Beauty UK, but also on our Hairdressers Journal International Facebook page, um, our Professional Beauty HJ Ireland Facebook page, and also on our Professional Beauty GCC. So we're, we're worldwide today. <laughs> um, and that's basically because we, um, we're talking about awards, which we run a lot of at the Professional Beauty Group. Um, as a company, we do the British Hairdressing Awards, British Hairdressing Business Awards, Professional Beauty Awards in the UK and also over in South Africa and the GCC region. Um, the International World's Brown Wellness Awards which come up in October, Modern Barber Awards and this year for the first time the Professional Beauty and Hairdressers Journal Awards International in Ireland um, which are open right now for entries until the 28th of August so if you're watching in Ireland go and check those out. So um, yeah we'll get started we've got an award-winning panel today to talk about the benefits of, of entering awards and what a win or a finalist place even can do for your business. So um, I'm really happy to be joined today. I will go around in the order I can see them on my screen, but it won't be the same on yours. Um, we've got Rebecca Griffiths, who is owner of The Secret Spa in Wrexham. And The Secret Spa won a uh, uh, Boutique Salon of the Year Award at Professional Beauty UK last year. And Rebecca has also won a Therapist of the Year Award in the past. So hi, Rebecca. Hi. <laughs> we've also got Tima Rashad, who is the director of Coco Nail Bar in London. And Coco has won a Nail Salon of the Year Award. Hi, Tima. Hello. And finally, we have um, Sean Dawson, who's the general manager of Adelaide London. Um, and Sean has won the London Hairdresser of the Year Award at the British Hairdressing Awards and has also been part of an artistic team that's won at the British Hairdressing Awards. So hi, Sean. Hello. How you doing? Fab, really good. So we will get started. I mean, I think what we will do to kick off, if it's okay, is to just maybe go around and you can all talk a little bit about your businesses and um, and your your recent awards win and what it's done for your business. So Rebecca, I don't know if can we start with you to talk a little bit about um, yeah winning Professional Beauty UK awards. Yeah, no problem. Um, I started entering the awards probably about different awards about 10, 11 years ago. Um, so we've won quite a few um, different awards all over from pro beauty to investors in people. Um, so it, it has increased the business. You can see the bookings instantly um, go up. So for the sake of entering an award, for me, it's just a win-win. Um, so I've, I've really found it's helped the team morale and it's increased, obviously, the business side. Um, but clients also love the buzz of being involved with a award-winning salon. Um, and not just because... It's, it just sets people apart and new customers who may move to the area might not know where to go or um, which salon to pick or but if they have something that sets another salon apart to me that will only only sort of increase your business and only be a good good factor fantastic thank you and, and Tina can you tell us a little bit about Coco and, and uh, why you live through uh, so I opened uh, Coco Nail Bar nine years ago. Um, at that time, there wasn't anything um, that uh, mixed cocktails and um, a bar into the element of nail bars. So I kind of introduced that. There, there was a bit of like champagne here and there, but we kind of went all out and we have a proper bar. Um, but then to the mix, um, I added a DJ at weekends. Um, and we're based on Portobello Road, so it's kind of a different vibe anyway, and it's, it was quite welcomed. Um, the, although we had a lot of interest in our business, by having won our first award uh, in 2014, um, we kind of um, propelled ourselves into um, being taken more seriously, as it were. Um, and since then, we've won uh, four different awards, um, and I've actually displayed them at the front of the shop. Um, and obviously, we're very proud of it. So, but when clients walk past, um, there's, you know, other salons um, in the area, but you know, they they want to um, feel comfortable parting with their um, money. So they'd rather, you know, give it to somebody who has been. Um, I guess, appreciated by the um, industry. 
And yeah. I think um, the other thing is um, having won an industry award, in my opinion, um, is worth more than say, you know, the other awards that you, you tell all your clients or all your friends and get everyone to vote because it's people in the industry and people who know how it's supposed to be run rather than um, clout, I guess, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, gathering all of that up. Absolutely, thank you. And Sean, can you tell us a little bit about your business and, and your award twins? Yeah, I, th I think, I mean, with awards, I mean, I've been entering awards since probably about 1999, I think, was uh, probably even before that. Um, and obviously, what, what over the years, I, I started off just with creative awards, so um, I, that were more individual. Um, so it was all about me at that time. Mm -hmm. So I was entering things, like I, I think I entered London three times before I actually won it in 2013. Before that, I was based in the Southern region, so I'd, I'd entered and, and finalised in Southern, but never won it. Um, but yeah, it was very much, it's, it's interesting as your career develops. So, you know, when it was all about me as an individual at the beginning, and then obviously as, as you work in brands and you, you become more senior and you start doing more creative roles within the company, you're, you know, you're, you're working on awards with other people, which I actually find more, I get more of a buzz when someone else wins now in my team than if, if I win an award myself. But, but yeah, I've tried to, as I say, it started off very, just, just very much with the creative awards. It then went into the business awards. I won manager of the year in 2013 at your BHA, uh, BHBA awards. Um, and again, it's, it's for me, like, like the girls just said, it's, it's been incredibly rewarding as again, as a stylist, I've built most of my, reputation most of my online presence um with that i remember when i won london the next morning like the far east I just lit up on my on my instagram followers um because i th i think they look at who wins british and then they look at london um after that um so i think i, I gained about it was about five thousand people in the first week of winning london hairdresser year mainly hairdressers um but again, from a business perspective, myself, I've jumped now working with Adam Reed on the new salon. We opened just three weeks before lockdown, unfortunately, but we're back and kicking now. And uh, and already we've we've we're targeting awards. We're finalising a couple of other in, uh, magazine awards. We're focused now very much on on British Address of the Year with Adam, who's been nominated. So that's really cool. Um, but we involve the team in that as well. So it's it's motivating. Even those team members aren't actually going to enter an award. We get them on the shoots and work with us so they can start being introduced to the process fairly quickly. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's been pivotal for my career and also for, for the businesses that I've worked with and worked for. Excellent. Amazing. Thank you. Um, I'll just say at this point, actually, if anyone is watching on any of our Facebook channels or here in Zoom, if you have any questions for any of our panellists as we go along, do just type them in the comments box and we will have a bit of QA and a as well. So let us know if you've got any questions. Um, but yeah, I think just touching on that, you mentioned boosting team morale and kind of getting the team involved. Um, I think that's a really important part of entering awards, isn't it? I think um, from the feedback that we always get from winners, it's not just about um, the individual that wins or, the, or the, the company that wins. It really kind of makes a difference to the whole team. Um, Rebecca, have you found that with your wins? Yeah, I have actually. My um, And, you know, like Sean said, I, I love winning myself and, and the salon and everything, but I now love when the girls enter and seeing what it does for their it really boosts their morale and um, it, it, for me, the way Pro Beauty judge it, out of all the awards I've ever entered, Pro Beauty judge it. So when you do receive it, you really do feel like they've gone through everything, the mystery shoppers, everything, to me, is so important because when you stand up and you receive the award, you actually really do believe that it's, it's from the best place ever because they, they judge the whole of the industry. Absolutely. And Tima, have you found that as well? Have you found that it's um, boosted team morale and or even kind of attracted uh, applications, I suppose? Has it helped with recruitment as well? Um, definitely it has um, boosted uh, the team morale, especially like when I, I mean, I, I when we win, it's not, my company winning it's all of us winning on the team because everyone's worked so hard so um 
just seeing them like screaming when, you know, we won the awards. It was just, you know, it was so nice. And, you know, they just feel so um, empowered um, because individually they're just nail technicians but as a goal as a whole we are more powerful and you know and then they really want to tell the clients about it and then it kind of spreads the love and you know and the clients who come to us they really pride themselves on being able to um come to us and afford to come to us um having you know they say well we we go to the you know multi-award winning coco nail bar and it's it's like a shared um, thing they haven't actually our, our, my um, team haven't um, individually entered um, I think maybe I should uh, encourage them absolutely yeah and I think that's the thing there's um, the good thing about awards is obviously there's some that recognize some businesses some that recognize employers some that recognize individual nail techs or, or hairdressers or, um, or, or therapists so it's quite good to to be able to enter multiple awards as one business I think as well and um, so I suppose in terms of kind of entering and, and making yourself stand out, um, Sean, what have you learned along the way over the years about, about how to really put an entry together and, and how to stand out to judges and really kind of shine? What are, the, what are your tips? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the thing is, I mean, just going back on the previous question, I, I, I think what's, what people also have to understand, it makes you better at what you do when you, when you enter an award. So whether it is a creative as a hairdresser, you know, there is a process that you have to go down and, and it, you know, and it is all about the preparation. I mean, the, the, the shoot day or the document, if you're entering the business awards is the final bit, but it's the preparation that makes you successful or not. So I think that preparation is really key and that preparation makes you better at what you do. Um, yeah. Uh, I think that, that I think also again it's really important for people to realize that you know when you see people that win the awards like as I said like myself I, I'd, I'd entered numerous times before and you know at the end of it it's although it's disappointing you have to learn to lose before you learn to win um, and you know I, I, I think that is a really important point because you know if you don't if you're not successful you need to sit down and look and think okay well I'm gonna continue next year but where can I learn from this year? You know, do I need to do more prep? Do my models need to be better? Um, so just covering that point. But um, I think, yeah, I, I mean, the key is for me is prep. I mean, if it's a creative award, probably again, the, 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 the worst thing you want to do is turn up on a shoot day and not know exactly what you're doing. So again, we would practice what our looks, we would practice, um, you know, all of our colours and that would be done beforehand so that they're ready on the day. So you're actually just really styling uh, and our cuts as well. Um, and, you know, a, a few meetings, you don't want too many meetings and you don't also want too many mood boards. Um, you just want a few pictures to be able to communicate beforehand with your makeup artist, your photographer, your model even. So I would even do um, a, a very small mood board with four or five looks on it to show the poses to the models that I'd, I'd like them to, you know, the sort of feeling that I'd like to get. Um, so again, you know, my, my biggest, my biggest advice to anybody is prep, 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 you know, and, and it makes the day more enjoyable. Um, although on the day, you know, if it is a creative and you're shooting, you're going to get hiccups on the day. You're going to get one model that you really struggle with, but that's part of the process. That's that, you know, that, that is part of the process of doing it. And if you, you know, if you find, that, that you're struggling with one particular model, put them aside, move on to the next model, go back to them, um, you know, go and get a bit of fresh air, um, don't get too stressed and, and certainly don't give up. Um, but yeah, prep, prep, prep. I mean, with my business awards again, you know, and with all the team, part of our process of, of, of getting a team member to, to enter an award is we want to see their preparation first. And if the preparation is not good enough, Unfortunately, they don't get entered or they don't even get to the shoot. So it's a, it's, it is very motivating, but also, you know, it's a good way for us to measure those team members, their consistency uh, and also how much work they're going to put in it. You know, it's not for us to do it. It's for them to do it. So, yeah, that's key. Absolutely. And as you say, it's a different process depending on which, which type of awards you're entering. So obviously for British Hairdressing Awards, it's, it's very much a creative shoot. And for a lot of uh, business awards, it's more um, an online entry form initially. Um, Tima, how do you um, go about kind of putting together that initial entry? What do you think are kind of the key things that, that help to make an online entry stand out? Um, 
I think the first thing is um, not to be modest. Um, you really have to, this is the one time you need to put it out there. Um, and as long as you can just, um, perhaps through the year, have a little journal, write down or like some uh, notes on your phone or whatever, and write down everything you've accomplished um, and um, anything that stands out. You can put um, any training that you've sent the uh, team on, um, literally anything, any uh, social media stuff, um, you know, any magazines you've been in, put it all down because by the end of the 12 months, you'll forget about it um, and just record it and yeah, put it all out there. Absolutely. And, and Rebecca, what about you? When you're putting together an entry, um, what are the kind of key things that you make sure are in there? Or what do you think that, um, that people should think about, I suppose, when they're entering awards for, for the first time, perhaps? Um, I really think you've got that, that small opportunity to be able to, you've got to catch the judges. And for me, with all my entries, um, and like Sean said, when you don't get through and you're disappointed or you become a finalist, which is amazing, and, and then you win, I think you've got to show your passion um, and you've, it's really got to stand out and you've got to capture the judges and, and you've got that small, small sort of document to do that in. Um, and like Tima said, record everything that you do through the year and all the special little points and what makes you different to the next salon that's going to be entering. Absolutely. So exactly capturing your USP as they call it. And really, it. I, think, yeah. I think that's so important. And I think, um, you know, with a lot of categories in awards, judges have so many entries to wade through. So there really needs to be something right at the top that says, this is why I'm different. This is why I stand out. So that's really Can good. I just say on that as well? Yeah, Cause it's really interesting. I, I, you know, I'm fortunate enough to judge a lot of awards as well. And I think, especially with online awards or when, when you're putting in a portfolio for like, um, like the business awards as such, try not to make them too wordy. I think the problem is it's great now that often the online ones actually, you know, they give you a maximum word count, which is great because I'm going to be really honest. It's like there, I see a lot of judges, you know, that, that sort of the lights go off after a while. If you're, if you're having to read a lot, especially because most of the judges are creative people, you know, you can see if you, if, you know, another document's dropped in front of you, you know, that's this thick, they're not, they're not, they're not going to read it. I'm gonna, and that's, you know, to give people advice, it is like, you know, I love what both Rebecca and Tina said, you know, we're, we're looking, we're a bit early yet to, to enter business um, awards, but we will be next year. And we've started putting our portfolio together now. Um, so if we capture everything and we're actually putting it in a folder ready to create the business awards which is really important but but yeah with anyone that's entering if you're entering something try to keep it clear don't do too much repetition but mm -hmm. most importantly stick to the criteria as well you know yeah. and don't again like what tina said i loved is you know don't be modest and, and if you're entering something like stylist of the year and it asks you you know it asks you to to for your salon work as well they're not just talking about, I don't want to know someone who's inspired by, you know, Lee McQueen, Alexandra McQueen or whatever. I want to know what they do in the salon, what their figures are, how they're growing, how they've grown mm -hmm. over a certain amount of time. Make sure you put that in because it's important to see the business side as well as the, you know, the, the ego side and the creative side. Absolutely. I think that's a really good point. I think um, one thing that we do sometimes see in the awards on the professional beauty side is perhaps people entering it from too much of a consumer mindset to say this is why we care for our clients which is all very important but it's also about business isn't it and I think um, putting those facts and figures in there what your marketing plan is what your what your profit and loss is you know is all really going to help to to prove that you're a successful business as well as a, a, as popular with clients which is equally important and um, can we talk a little bit about I suppose putting an entry together um, gives you a good opportunity also to assess your business, to look at what you have been doing over the year and perhaps take stock of things. Um, and then also often with awards, you will be able to get feedback. So um, is there anything that any of you have done differently, I suppose, as a result of feedback from entering awards and or that period of just reflecting and putting an entry together that's, that's made you perhaps change, change anything about your businesses? 
Um, <laughs> Just leave I, that open. Everyone, everyone likes it. Um, I found actually that I was going to say um, feedback is so important. Um, and um, there have been years that we haven't won. And I saw the girls get upset on the team. And I said, well, it's fine because you can't always be number one. And you raise the bar. And then somebody else comes and raise the, raises the bar further. And then you just, it's like an ongoing thing, which is great because then uh, the level of beauty in the country raises, you know. Um, but um, I think getting feedback is really important because um, I think after the awards, once you, one of the finalists, you get a, um, the feedback sheet. Um, and for us, um, I realized that our social media wasn't what it should have been. Um, so we, you know, we started doing more on the marketing and the social media aspect of things. And it's all new to us every, and then every, um, so often there's a new um, platform that you need to work on before um, Instagram wasn't so, um, in, well, it, it wasn't as advanced as it is now. So um, gradually we've ended up, um, you know, investing more in that side of the business. And it's actually a blessing becoming one of the top five because you then have someone from the outside kind of critiquing your work. Mm. Yeah. So. so that process, exactly, I suppose. Um, and then it varies depending on different awards, but you often get some quite useful feedback about, not, not even just things to change, but things that you're doing really well. So, Rebecca, have you found that in your business? Has there been, been kind of useful feedback that's helped you to, to develop? Yeah, every, every time, you know, we've, we've had the feedback forms. Um, just like Tina said, our, on one um, few years ago, five, six years ago, we had the same. Social media wasn't quite there, and um, that's not my forte. Um, so it made me really think, right, that's where I've got to improve the business. And again, reiterating what Tina said, it is so good to have that somebody looking at your business with a fine tooth comb and helping you along, even though you're disappointed and the team gets sort of, only initially, they just on the evening, they think, oh, but then it's almost like you get the bit between your teeth and you think, right, pick me back up and go again. And, you know, and, and that's what's so good. You only just improve from it constantly it's just improving all the time absolutely and Sean as well have you kind of learned over the years from entering various awards feedback? yeah I think I mean for me I've always said especially like the business uh, entries they, they almost become like a brand bible really I, I think like you know it's I, I guess again we're all you know we're in an industry where you're busy being busy you're always busy and it's like and so you often don't get the chance to sort of step back and look at what you've done, what's been successful, what's not been successful, until you do a dossier entry like that. And I think like, I think one of the important things I always say to people is it's important to keep them as well, because again, two or three years down the line, I remember when I won the, the manager of the year at the British Hairdressing Business Awards, a few years later, I remember picking back up the portfolio and reading it. And actually there were things that I weren't doing anymore that, that obviously were very successful back then. Um, and yeah, again, it was uh, then implemented in them in the business that I was in. So, you know, not only are they, they, they great in the present, they're also really helpful in the past to go back. Because again, I think as creative people, you tend to forget sometimes the most basic things that you do well, that keep you consistent. Um, and they act as really, really good reminders. You know, at home, I've got all of my portfolios, the ones that I didn't, you know, even finalise with, I've got them all. And sometimes, as I say, it's, it's a really important thing. And, and again, you know, I, I think in portfolios are, are important to share with your clients because, you know, the, the clients, you know, they love to see that. They, and often it, a client will, you know, if you get a lot of clients saying, oh, I didn't realise that you were doing that. I didn't realise you understand then that, you know, that, that you've not marketed that particular initiative properly. So, yeah, they're, they're massively, massively important. And again, going back, it will make your business better or creatively make you a better hairdresser, you know, if you, if you keep them and keep looking back at them and keep building them. Yeah. That's a really interesting point. So again, you may forget that things that have worked in the past, it's a, it's a great way to look back and, and think about the business for the future. 100%. Um, so can we talk a little bit about winning, I suppose, because this is the <laughs> getting to the ultimate point of uh, 
being up there on the stage, getting the silverware, being able to celebrate, being able to show that trophy in your in your business. And um, what are kind of the main benefits, if we can perhaps go around? I mean, I know we've mentioned a little bit about boosting team morale, but what else has have, have you kind of gained as a benefit of winning um, in terms of publicity, client footfall? Does it help in marketing? Are you getting press coverage? Rebecca, what, what have you found in your business that, that has come from a result of winning an award? Um, first thing, obviously, I get so emotional on stage. And <laughs> I am so bad. Which so, is great. It's great. And, and clients um, always sort of comment on that. Like Sean said, the next day, the next week, the phone just doesn't stop. Um, and that feeling never goes away. So when I'll polish the awards up and still they're in the, war, in the window or in the reception, it takes you straight back to that time of the actual winning evening. Um, the team are just on cloud nine for weeks and weeks. Um, and I think that just increases only again, positivity in the salon. Clients can see that, they can, they can see the team and the way the team work together and they constantly want to strive to keep the standard there, even after the awards continued at, you know till the next awards and the next awards they just want to have that that standard raise and and that's what i think is really important with especially you know now um with everything we're faced at the minute i think it's so important to see the hygiene and everything even when it's not in the awards it's got to just continue constantly and it makes you do that it, it really does excellent thank you and Tima, what about you? What kind of uh, benefits have you seen since, uh, since your awards wins? Um, we've had a lot of uh, interest from the press. We get um, national newspapers contacting us. Um, we've had TV crews wanting to film. Um, I mean, everything. Um, and uh, I think it's all important, but ultimately it's the client journey and that our clients like to be um, coming to a winning salon. Um, so it helps the business financially and the bottom line as well. So. so do you have, when you have won the awards, have you seen a, a kind of spike in booking shortly after the wins? Um, well, the thing is, because it's an industry award, unless we shout out about it, the clients don't know. Um, but definitely from displaying the awards and us shouting about it, um, yes, there is. And um, there, yeah, it does make a difference. But because, like I said, it's an industry award, unless you're going to shout you know, from the rooftops, about what you've done, clients won't know about it. Sure. Or, or on the other hand, as you say, it helps then lead to press coverage, which, which will yes. boost your consumer recognition. That's right. Excellent. And, and Sean, what about you? What have been, has there been any kind of initial results um, straight after your wins or how has uh, how have your wins helped this business? Yeah, I definitely think, I mean, especially now like with social media, you know, there is, um, you know, there is a global market that you're, you're, you know, that you're opened up to as well, which is fantastic. And the number of different platforms that, that cover award wins, you know, like it's um, with the British Hairdressing Awards, it's quite incredible how many other, you know, even the beauty press pick up on it and uh, um, which is fantastic. Um, I think like Rebecca said, you know, what I love about awards as well is, is you, 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 you push the bar up. So you, you actually, you know, when you do win, you you elevate that bar where you have to you have to be better as well. You have, so it, it is really you know not just motivating but again, you know it pushes you to be better and better and better. Um, I think the one thing as well is, you know, two things. Or I would say is, firstly, I think if you're going to enter an award and you're entering it seriously to win it, you really do need to plan as well afterwards what your PR objective will be after so you've got that ready because the next morning once the hangover's worn off you want to be working on that straight away um or maybe the day after um you know and getting your press releases out and and because again you know we all know what the press is like if it if it you know if if it goes a few days or a week it's old news and they mm -hmm. won't pick it up mm -hmm. and also especially local press again in in our industry i find we you know we're so desperate to get into the to the national press 
We forget about the local press, which is really important to your business. But the last thing I wanted to say, and the second point was, what, what you have to understand if you're a business owner watching this is recruitment as well. You know, if it is an industry award um, or if it is a, a, you know, a, a consumer award, it, it helps your recruitment massively if you're a company. You know, other stylists want to come and work in places that are successful and often want to come and work because they want to go down that path as well. So, um, I, you know, I, th I think that's, that's really important. When we, when we enter an award, we have an objective sh sheet. So we say, right, you know, we're, we're entering uh, a creative team. Um, you know, what would be our objectives if we do win it? You know, and I think that's really important. It's no good just entering an award for the point of entering the award. You know, you, you, as a business person, you have to have a, a proper objective and a proper sort of timeline and schedule, um, you know, if you do win. On, and even if you finalise, you know, don't get me wrong. If you, even if you're in the, you know, if you're in the top six in your country, that's that's amazing. You should be telling everybody, but it will help your recruitment massively. Mm. I think that's a really good point, and I think um, that point about finalising it and getting local press coverage, particularly if you reach the finals, you know, people are interested. And I know um, on the professional beauty side, obviously. To, if you reach the finals or if you win, you'll be given images and logos and a, a template press release to kind of get your name out there, which is, like you say, really important to, to do that quickly. And, and yeah. obviously on the, uh, the BHA side as well, there's a, a lot of PR support. So I think that's a, you know, a, a professional PR team there to help, to help push you as well. And that's a really important part of it that, um, you know, most awards will help you to, to publicize yourself as, as much as kind of give you the, uh, the tools to do it yourself. <coughs> But I think recruitment as well is, is really important, isn't it? I think it's been particularly in the spa and, uh, and beauty side recently, there has been um, a struggle with rec recruitment with enough high quality therapists coming through. Um, so I think having that extra boost to, to kind of get your name out there and, and be the one that they want to apply to is really important. Um, Tima and Rebecca, have you, seen, uh, have you seen that? Have you seen that awards wins do help with recruitment? Have people mentioned them when they have applied to you? Yes, definitely. Um, they, they want to come and work in an award winning in the establishment and we're really lucky the staff turnover is quite low. A lot of my girls have been with me for 20 years um, and then, you know, some that come through the, from the colleges and things, that's where they want to go, they want to target you and like Sean said, it makes it so much easier because you know that they have got a standard themselves and they're coming, coming to you to just hopefully join the team. Excellent and also hopefully that they are keeping an eye on what's going on in the industry and, and, and recognising the win so they're sort of in touch with the, with the market already hopefully. Fantastic. So, um, so I, was, I was just going to say as well with young people I mean we've we've have found it particularly hard I'm sure beauty is the same but getting young people since the schools changed it where it was like you know you you couldn't leave school at 16 and, uh, unless you had an apprenticeship um we've struggled before in targeting them people but i think promoting your award wins as well what what happens is it, it actually makes parents feel more comfortable you know if they know that their their child is going to start an apprenticeship at a salon that's an award-winning salon you know they're they're much more comfortable bringing them into our industry than they would be you know just dropping them into anywhere that they didn't know so again you know we have before targeted an, or used an award win to target parents of school leavers as well as the school leavers themselves and um, just to give them that sort of security. Yeah, well that's a really interesting point I think because that is a worry isn't it I suppose you know much as um, we know the quality of the industry there is that often that feeling that hair and beauty is a bit of a secondary choice and you know that's something that we were all struggling to kind of overcome that um, you know parents might not see it as a, as a respectable respectable career so to have that I suppose to sort of say like you know there are these are really serious businesses. These are businesses that have been recognised and, and are doing really well. Is it, is it quite yeah, and, and seeing, a, you know, seeing that the actual wards are at somewhere like, you know, like the Grosvenor House Hotel and seeing the images of like thousands of people there or, you know, it, it's, it's really important. You know, it's not, mm -hmm. these, these award finals aren't at the local town hall. Yeah. You know, so again, when you do your press release, it's really important that, that you make sure that you have the venue name in it. You've got a photograph, you know, that, that you guys, you know, supply for us that, that has that crowd. And, you know, that, that really does up the standard of yeah. the awards in, in people's minds. It's really important. 
Absolutely, and I think that's, um, that's a big part of awards, isn't it? I think from our perspective as a company, that's one of the big reasons that we want to do awards is to help to differentiate because, you know, there are, um, I suppose in the beauty side, we might call them non-standard salons. There are salons that aren't necessarily at that level and we want to say, like, this is an opportunity to say, to put your, set yourself apart, really, and say, you know, the industry is divided, but there are some really amazing, well-run, incredible businesses out there and this is yeah. how you identify them, you know. Absolutely. And also, I love it, like, you know, you always have a really high-profile, you know, um, compares there. And that, this sounds silly as well, but you know, if when I won it, it won London, David Williams was doing the the compa, and so I had a photo with myself, Jane, and, and David Williams. You know, and if you put that out there, that's an instant recognisable face that people are drawn to. That whether it's you know flicking for a feed or whether it is in a local paper or whatever, you know that. So again, that's part of our PR strategy if we do win to make sure that we get a good quality photo of that that host. I know that sounds really silly, but it is a pace stopper or stop someone flicking, oh, it's David Williams goes back and then they read the piece. So, you know, yeah. you have to be that, that detailed about it, I think, um, especially as I say in the post, you know, award win side. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And kind of use that, use that to help publicize your own position as a winner or a finalist. Fantastic. And I just wanted to touch a bit on, we mentioned, I think Rebecca, you mentioned just now, um, you know, obviously, we've been through such a difficult time this year with um, sounds being, being closed for, for several months and only just starting to reopen and, and get back to business um, and obviously we are starting to, to hold our awards events from autumn when we're allowed to do so and, and really give people a chance to celebrate I think and to come together and kind of almost sort of forget the difficulties that have happened or try to but really sort of help to boost business going forward and I think perhaps that's more important than ever um, looking forward to next year and kind of picking up and uh, getting back to business and, and having a, a reason to celebrate. Um, so I suppose that, you know, to, to, to all of you, do you think that that's something that will, um, will help to kind of bring people back to salons and bring business back and, and sort of make salons and, and, and businesses stand out in their minds is to really kind of have an, an award win at this particular time, I suppose. How important do you think that this is going to be? <laughs> yes, really important. Yeah, the, the celebration as well. It'll be evening, but I think it is really important, more so than ever this year, um, because of what we've been faced with, and just to to bring everyone back up and get the press involved. Um, yeah, I do. Even you know when you're notified for finalists. Um, to notify them before the ceremony and just get a double whammy if possible. I think it's really important this year. I think salons really need it. Mm. And hair salons, obviously. Absolutely. And I think, um, I think that's the thing. I think people are, are kind of ready for a celebration right now. So <laughs> we have got um, many rebels running this autumn. Um, and as I say, for the first year, if you're watching in Ireland, um, for the first year, we have got our Professional Beauty and Hairdressers Journal Ireland Awards. So check them out. You can have a look on um, professionalbeauty.co.uk. Then there's an awards tab or on hji.co.uk if you're on the hair side. Um, and you can find all the categories there. But I think um, we are pretty much coming up to time. So thank you so much to all my panellists today, um, Rebecca, Tima and Sean. Um, I think it's been really interesting to sort of hear your own journeys and to just think of it about a bit, bit of a different angle, really, about what awards can do for different types of businesses. So thank you all so much for, for joining today. Thank you. Thank you. Us. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, and thanks everyone for watching and um, we've got loads more webinars coming up so as I said look on freshman.co.uk or hji.co.uk um, or the island or GCC sites if you're based there and you can see everything else we've got coming up soon but for now thank you to all the guys thanks